Um, meme review. Yeah, we're here. I'm doing a meme. Why not? Let's let's just do that. Good. Meme, meme today. Zero seats. I didn't make this. Uh, a rat I saw on Twitter made this meme. Yes. Very good rat. We'll get back to him later. But let's uh, let's get to what this is. Now you may remember or may recall there's a Twitter account called Stats for Lefties, which um, is infected with idiocy. But that's a whole other problem. But the stats bit is pretty cool. And as you can see here, the conservatives were doing really, really, really bad and still are in the polling. And so they did some analysis of what the country would look like if it was ran off these various polls. So they did the YouGov one, for example. And they found that the Conservative Party would get 11 seats if the election was held under those conditions of the most recent YouGov poll there. And um, still 11 too many, but I like where it's going. Yeah, that is... Minus <laughs> <three>, six, one. <laughs> <laughs> that is extermination <laughs> on a political level. But then another poll was done, and it, it's still three too high. They got three seats <laughs> in this poll, <laughs> making them the fifth biggest party in electoral politics from being a, a complete giant dominating the parliament. And that's just a nice representation of how much they failed, right? I mean, you, you had something spectacular. You had this massive majority. And now you were looking potentially at three seats. We're going to lose everything. Have, have you got have you got my tweet in this list? I don't know actually. I don't, All we'll right, we'll have a look. But uh, th this isn't the case, unfortunately. Um, looking at the average polling, these are the worst, well, I should say, best case scenarios. Uh, the average polling is around twenty seven percent, so they're looking yes. at like a hundred seats instead. But that doesn't mean we can't dream, boys. It doesn't mean we can't push them down there, because uh, the problem with them is that obviously they're shit. That much is obvious. But we don't all agree on why. And this is also being discussed within that party, it seems. And they've come to the conclusion, what if we, what if we become worse? Then people will vote for us. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to let you know that we have a brand new selection of merch on our merch store. Uh, these won't be in the store forever, so if you do want them, go and get them now. Thanks very much. And I, I'm not joking, because you might find an average lunatic like this guy, right? This guy decided to tweet this. The Conservative Party has become the British National Party, it, not New Labour. If you doubt that, look at the Labour and BNP manifestos at Blair's height in 2005 and tell us which one sounds like the Conservatives. Now, a lot of people obviously just mock this with the Conservative Party become the BNP. Would you like a nod with that, sir? Yes, yes. <laughs> They're indistinguishable from the National Party. It's just stupid. It's just, it's just stupid. <laughs> that person is a lunatic. Not living in reality. But all the Tories ever do, which is a point, a point I made on my tweet, is, is basically do whatever Blair was doing, only much, much more of it. Yeah. And we've seen the transformation. I mean, we've got two yes. options in the, in the mainstream there, if you want to look at it that way, which is you've got the Labour Party, and we've been through the history now. I feel really glad yes. that we went through those manifestos. Yes. Because the Labour Party's history post-war is bragging about destroying the empire and being a traitor to the British. Forever. That's one option. And then you've got the Conservatives, who were well, basically since like the 90s decided they would become also traitors, and ever since have done everything they can to betray everyone who's ever voted for them. Okay. okay. So I you both suck. I, I remember 2010 when um, uh, Peter Hitchens was making this argument the last time round. He because he he was really the originator of the zero seats meme. He didn't he didn't praise it like that, but he was saying you have to destroy the Conservative Party because otherwise. Uh, they're just going to body block the emergence of a genuine right wing party forever, right? And at the time, everyone argued against it by saying, "Yeah, but if we if we don't vote for the Tories, then Labour might put immigration up, for example, because immigration was really high back then. It was like two hundred thousand a year net immigration, and people said, That's "Well, if you, yeah, if you if you if you don't get rid of the Labour Party, you, you could end up with like four hundred thousand a year immigration." So all those are out the window. Yeah, because none of that matters anymore. So, like, we've, we've all had this discussion. It's why I try not to do say words about British politics because it's usually kind of foreign stuff, right? Hmm. But those people in that party are also having this discussion. And my God, they've come to a conclusion and they agree zero seats. That's the only they, option. They want to lose, I think, <laughs> at this point. Because, of course, the people who control that party are made up of the same kind of morons who work at Sky News. Now, this yeah. is Sky News reporting on a press conference from the Reform Party where Lee Anderson defected and joined them, okay? Listen to this. Seeing pictures from the preparations for a press conference from the Reform Party of Great Britain there, the Union Jack being rather a giveaway as to what they think about things. Being what? Yeah, okay. 
I don't need to say anything. You know what that mindset is, and you know that mindset. Okay, so what's going on with that? Because you may, as I mentioned, know that one of the Conservative MPs is now defected to reform. Same thing happened under UKIP, so we're getting to that level. Last time this happened under UKIP, the Conservatives buckled and basically gave everyone the referendum on Brexit in yeah. response. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. But that's where they are. So the person who has that mindset at Sky News, I believe, is the same person who's running the Conservative Party at this point. Yes. Because, my God, they're trying so hard for zero seats. With stuff like this. This is the newest release. Uh, 10 Downing Street. Ramadan Mubarak, everyone. Celebrating Ramadan. Um, this was massively dunked on by people being like, the usual thing of England's a Christian country. Stop. But then a lot of people pointed out, you guys keep posting this, even on your, your other accounts. Um, but not once did you mention anything for Lent. You only take your time out of your day to do weird foreigner celebrations. Mm. That, that's not normal. That's, that's dumb. That's the kind of thing some weird you know, xenophile would do who, who didn't like their own people. Well, it would be a bit like Saudi Arabia forgetting to mention Ramadan but making a big fuss about Easter. Yeah. But they, of course, would never do that. But, but our country would do that. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty bad. I mean, the response was bad. It's, it's just people being angry at you for, mm. for doing what you're doing. Did um, you see also the Archbishop of Canterbury? Did he come out and say, I love Islam or something? Close to it. <laughs> He's now a Muslim. I wouldn't be a surprise. But it's not the only thing. As you can see here, there's their other tweets. You know, all their, all their PR recently. The, the Twitter page is just a great way of summarizing it. As you can see here, conservatives are the party for women. Uh, again, everyone kind of hating it. Just despise this. Because, like, what are you talking about? I mean, before we even get into the whole men and women equality, blah, blah, blah arguments, minority BS? Intersectional BS, don't care. Got real problems. Economy doesn't exist anymore. It's 30% inflation since 2020. You know, you're letting in hundreds of thousands of illegals into the country. And then the million of illegals, sorry, legals that you brought in, that you said you wouldn't. The house prices are going through the roof. And you sit here talking about vaginas. So Curtis Yarvin has got this theory, I think it was Curtis Yarvin, or was it somebody else, who thinks that um, Rishi Sunak is in a pact with um, Starmer to talk about this woke shit all day long because they've got no idea how to solve the financial problems. Just ride the wave. Yeah. So if, if they, can, the zero they can get everybody arguing about woke stuff all day long, then nobody ever has to talk about the financial black hole they're in. But nobody's biting. I mean, you may remember we went over this. I mean, arguing that conservatives yeah. are the party of black Jewish Muslim women from Asia. Mm. Why? Just, just why? I mean, again, just everyone hating on them, as you can see by the ratios, how this works. Oh, there's you. We've noticed that you don't care in the slightest about representing the natives. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. Not on the cards. Not of interest. And it goes on and on. I mean, this just came out today or the other day. Who cares? It's the same news every week at this point. Anti-Muslim hatred has absolutely no place in our society, says Rishi Sunak. So I've announced to give the Muslims 117 million pounds. I thought it was a million. It's 117 million. When the what? budget it was a million, and that was only a week ago, and it's up to 117 million now, is it? What about anti-English hatred and anti-Western hatred? Has does he make anything? Okay, we're trying uh, to get that up. Okay, we're trying to destroy the English, my friend. Okay, don't say anything. <laughs> No, I'm not trying to be rude, but sincerely, like the. Yeah. That's mad. Because for people who can't see as well, they're saying they're giving the Muslims 117 million pounds for security measures in Muslim schools. From. Right. Who? Who is bombing the Muslim schools? Well, there was, there was a case about 12 years ago of somebody who left a bacon sandwich outside a mosque. So they must be thinking of him. It wasn't a safe <laughs> space. It was. <laughs> There aren't any. There isn't. There's well, none. That, well, that, that's, that's the only thing I can think of. Un, unwanted bacon sandwiches turning up. Yeah. But I'm sorry. There's zero. There's no English Liberation Army. There's no Jews bombing the mosques. It's, it's not. Yeah. I mean, there may be some Muslims bombing the mosques. Maybe that's it. I don't know. <laughs> what? Like, I'm sorry, but just uh, mad. Mad, mad, mad. Mad, mad, mad optics. What are you doing? What are you doing with your lives? You believe 170 million pounds to the Muslim community because of. Me, and, and they—they they, 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 they never sort of spunk off a hundred million for 
some native British group. Like, okay, the Morris dancers are going to get 117 million this week. It's, it's never anything like that. You know, Sam Malay is going to get 57 million in order to raise awareness of white concerns or something. It just, just, just doesn't bloody happen. I mean, what would they do if they did do that? Like, here's, here's 100 million for Welsh schools to protect themselves from the English. So every kid gets a club. Oh, <laughs> forms of phalanxes or something. <laughs> Moving up. But that, that's 30 pounds a Muslim. I did the math. Um, turns out they're also giving 70 million to the Jews uh, to keep them safe. This one might make a little more sense because, you know, there's actually some people who might kill them. But, okay, what, what, about, what about all those girls in North Yorkshire who were getting raped for a decade and the, and the government covered it up? I mean, do they, do they get any protection? Again, shh. Mm. That's the English. Let them die. Yes. They're not important. I ran the math on this. This is £278 per Jew. So there we are. There's your, there's your tax return. So hang on. <laughs> Just, uh, it, was, it, was, it was 278 per Jew. How much did the... the £30 Muslim? a Muslim. Oh, okay. Is that, is, that, is that about the right ratio? I mean, it sounds about right, doesn't it? Well, well, there's literally zero risk on the Muslims, so that should be zero pounds. Yes, that's a fair point. Um, the Jews, I mean, there is some risk. But then again... Um, yes. I, I, why? Why is there risk against the Jews? Is it the English? Did, no. did we buy them clubs? Are they going Jew hunting? No. Yes. Again, I mean, like this isn't a press release. That is good news. This is again zero seats. I'd like to point attention to the fact that we've turned the country into an ethnic war. And and bear, you now. <laughs> and bear in mind, at every opportunity before this happened, somebody sat down and thought, "Yes, this is this is the policy we need. This is this is what will move us in the right direction." Battle Royale. Britain. Okie dokie. But that million you were mentioning, um, mm. I think you may be misremembering, that million is for a statue of Muhammad to be put up. What, seriously? Not the original Muhammad, no. But some Muhammad. Oh, right. So this is a million pounds. Because they do get a bit touchy about depictions of the Muhammad, don't they? Yeah. So this is a million pounds for a memorial to honor British Muslims who fought, or not even British Muslims, just Muslims, who fought in the two world wars. Oh, so even the ones who fought against us, they, yes. they get a statue as well, do they? Right, okay, fair enough. Because I was thinking about this earlier. Right. I, I like the two world wars. I'm interested in history. Yes. Okay, I'm going to discount any Muslims who had to fight for their side because they didn't have a choice. So, you know, Muslims in India or I don't know, Jordan in the Second World War. I mean, they're a British colony. What are they going to do, right? First World War. So who's the independent Muslim states? Who are they fighting for? Well, it was the Ottomans against us. Yes. Our enemy. Okay. Muslims in the Second World War. What did they do? Well, there's two that we invaded. Iraq and Iran, they fought against us. Uh, the rest of the Muslim states that were on our side were our puppets. So, so it is basically a statue for our enemy. The people who fought against us. Yeah. The only other Muslims I can think of who were active in the Second World War, are the, in an independent way, were the Muslims that went and fought for Hitler because of Islamic reasons. Oh, yeah, he was quite friendly with the Iranians, wasn't he? He called them the original, the original Aryans. Yeah, but there were also some guys in Palestine who were a bit pissed off that we were in yes. Jews. So they, they joined the Hitler guys to... It's, it's a bit like in Canada where they where the only sort of war sort of heroes that they applaud was that SS guy. Yeah. I mean, maybe he should get a statue as well in, in full SS uniform and just put that on, put that in London somewhere. We love minority issues. We're intersectional. Also, we're giving loads of money to people to fight. And now we're building a statue to the foreigners who, who fought against us. So the thing, the thing that I can't get my head around is, are, are they doing this thinking, yeah, as soon as people hear that we're building a million pound statue of Mohammed, that will, that, that, that will just cause our vote share to rock it up? Or do they genuinely want <laughs> zero seats? <laughs> I think they want zero seats. Because it's like, okay, so the highest immigration in basically ever I mean, the, the only reason immigration isn't higher is because they can't physically stamp the forms fast enough. And in fact, they, they put out that weird story a couple of weeks ago that the high immigration was because of Putin. Did you see that? Yeah. It's like, so, so, so apparently Putin has been sending KGB agents into the home office overnight to stamp visas really quickly or something, yeah. like shuffle them into the, in, shuffle them into the post. Right? So, so highest immigration, highest tax burden since the war, permanent culture war shit, um, given a million pounds to build a Muhammad statue. Massive deficits. <laughs> that phrase alone. Yeah. A million pounds for a Muhammad statue. 
I mean, at what at what point do they do they do all of this stuff and think, yeah, that that would what will happen now? Because is all of the people who like mass immigration, high taxes, and statues of Muhammad who don't already vote for Labour will now vote for us? Because it's not about history; it's revisioning the uh, re, uh, doing revision of the past in order for, to. For, for what they conceive of as their political expediency. Well, at this rate, they're, they they're going to get want negative their, seats and they're going to the amount of history. They will say, we want their support. We're going to support them and and give them what they want. That That's what they their mentality But they is. must see the opinion polls. They must see that... The Sturgis is right because they stuff. As long as I'm not getting this wrong, like they, they actually see, okay, you've got the English. Yeah. I mean, the reason I went sh- is because literally I think their position is secretly, let's destroy them. They're just not interested in preserving that. And in which case, you just give money to the other groups. And the other groups here are, um, well, these ones. I mean, the last group I have to mention is just this thing. This thing happened. This is a Tory MP getting all hot and bothered because a Scottish MP believes that women exist. This is the, the kind of shit we would... Mo- you know those cringe SJW leftist compilations? So, so That's for, a Tory MP. So for those who are listening at home, we've got... Um, a a a plus size conservative woman who is who is ranting and raving because um, because the 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 people who do the dress up stuff I'm not allowed to mention them mind but the people who do the dress up stuff um, have been disrespected and that's a Tory MP arguing that yeah I I think the, the craziest thing would be to do a statue of the German painter. Because uh, uh, you know what they would say, you know what they would say, they would say that whatever was on his, in his mind, that th- the effect of World War II was to uh, diminish the power of the great European powers, and it inadvertently led to decolonization. I think they have a weird right. fascination for that. Well, if, if we're going to build a statue of everyone else who fought for him, the inadvert- we, we, might, we might as well just <laughs> inadvertent decolonizer. <laughs> Eventually, we're going to run out of people to build statues to. It's oh. like, okay, well, we've got, we've got to do either Hans Gruber now or... <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. The big guy himself. But, yeah, I mean, I, sort of, I think I've made the point about the meme, where the meme came from. Zero seats. Yes. Because people just, like, what do you deserve? What are you aiming for, frankly? And even if we go to someone who people fetishize a little bit because of his beautiful accent, um, Jacob Rees-Mogg, he's been on the zero seats bandwagon recently as well. Because <laughs> as you can see, he decided to come out and say that there should be only one class of British citizen, and that includes Shamina Begum. Yes, indeed, the average British terrorist fights for ISIS. And then he did this. You know, well, I think today he decided to point out or argue that Lee Anderson, who looked at his own party and went, "Yeah, I don't want zero seats. I'm leaving." He says about him. Taking the whip away from Lee Anderson, kicking him out of the party, was a mistake. But backing reform is a bigger one for all those who want a Tory government. Who wants a Tory government? Not even you guys. That's why you're going for zero seats, aren't you? So that was the point. I think they want to lose. Yeah, I mean, I'm just repeating myself, but you can't explain it otherwise. Is, is it possible that the, the thing that you can't mention that people ended up within their arms a couple of years ago. Is it possible that they know something really bad about that and they're like, we want to be out of here. We just want to be gone. Because a lot of politicians around the world are quitting early. Like the guy in Australia, that Dan something, he quit at the height of his power. The Jacinda woman, the horsey teeth woman, she went early. And there's, there's loads of them all around the world who are just getting out before they need to. And it, it just looks like with the Tories, they're not just getting out, but they're taking the entire party with them. I'd say anything. Right. I, I don't believe in any of that. Right. The reason being that there's another meme, an right. older and more ancient meme about this party. Go on then. The 14 years meme. You know about the 14 <laughs> years meme? <laughs> no, Stelios does. No, 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 I don't. But I want to find out. So whenever the Conservative Party says anything like, the country's gone loony, it's the loony left, of blah, blah, whatever. Right. You just look at them and go, 14 years. You've been in power for 14 years. It's your responsibility. Right. And Carl yeah. did this response, where it's just a, a summation, effectively, of their 14 years. Uh, to Jacob here, because Jacob's whining. Uh, Carl says, The problem is that there is no prospect of a right-wing government on the horizon. By almost every metric, the Conservative Party is the most left-wing government in British history. Yeah. Tax burden is unjustifiably high. Immigration is at mind-boggling record levels. We have a punitive liberal speech codes, which imprison people for posting stickers. 
There is an almost exclusive focus on myopic minority issues at the expense of the majority issues. People don't feel represented by a party, so we'll not vote for you. The conservatives have nobody to blame for yourselves. Yep. And uh, as you can see, he's very proud. He was gloating this morning about how much he's uh, ratioed Mr. Mulk here. Yeah. But the point being, again, 14 years, no seats. 14 years, no seats. Like You deserve nothing else. It was your wish. You've gone here. They, they um, have to go. They have to go. And I'm not saying Labour will be any better, but they have to go so that we can get a genuine white wing party. So here's a, here's a joke about, you know, here's the rat, which I've stolen it all, it's all from, which is very good work. So we're going to check it out. And uh, he's making the point here after Rishi and I gave that speech. He was like, yep, we're on track. Zero seats. We're getting there, boys. And then you have, um, well, the, the rest of English society, which is, is more like this clip, which has blown up recently. This is a job center. Now, for our foreign viewers, the job center is where you go when you've been unemployed. And the purpose of the job center is to give you some money so you can live. But also with that, you have to apply for jobs. And we try and find you a job is the idea. This is the government organization doing this. And uh, so the lady on the phone is one of those poor ladies who has to deal with this situation. She's trying to find people jobs. Let's have a listen, shall we? This is Anne Good from the Department of Work and Pensions at Omni Job Centre. Could you please call me an urgent call? Um, I'll be leaving at five, but if you can ring me Monday, um, I'd be very much obliged. You do need to speak to me. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Not a little English name. is so based yeah that, that is just a perfectly normal opinion but everybody knows that you can't express it out loud it's just that she obviously got caught this time because she didn't put the phone down properly every corner of english society is like that every yes. pub every shop every person meeting on the road who meets their friend and has a discussion if it's about something like this every conversation well i, I know some good old fashion labor guys and, and they're exact well they're, they're worse than this way worse than this so that's, that's the country. And then you've got this party, which you know, is, is doing anything it can to ignore the actual problems. And that's why I look at this, and I, I love this meme, because it encapsulates something very, very good and a strategic goal, the reason for this election. What, why should you give a crap? Because most of them obviously do what they do. Uh, this one is, that's coming up is, is a chance for exterminatus. It is a chance to actually exterminate the Conservative Party and have them banished and the story of politics in the British Isles will be that once upon a time, a party for 14 years did all this and in return was utterly politically exterminated. Oh, it goes back further than that. The Tories have betrayed their base for centuries. Um, one of, of course. One of Margaret Thatcher's speech writers, Robin something, he wrote a book basically explaining that for centuries, the Tories have all they have ever done is betrayed their own voter base. But in which case... Yeah, I, that, that, I just, I'm thinking this meme is great. Spread it as much as possible. Mm. Uh, mark them endlessly uh, because it's what they deserve and what they shall get. Speak to your boomer parents and tell them, no, it is worth it to get rid of them. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Lads Hours, this one on whether or not cats or dogs are left or right wing. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.